Welcome to part three of this Haterade how-to tutorial series where I show you how you can integrate Plex with HomeKit via HomeBridge. Now, in case you missed it, in part one, I showed you how to download and set up all the necessary files and software programs needed to get started with HomeBridge and JSON. In part two, I showed you how to configure HomeBridge and download plugins for Plex and set up HomeBridge so that it will show up as a bridge and HomeKit. This video is part three, the final step in configuring HomeKit by adding and assigning automations to specific sensors so that we can automate our lights to automatically turn on and off whenever a movie is started or stopped and when you hit play or pause. Now, if you haven't watched part one or part two, please pause this video and go back and watch those videos as they are very crucial into getting Plex to integrate with HomeKit. After you've watched part one and two, come back to this video for part three. Let's discuss. All right, so the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna open our home app. Okay? And then we're gonna select automation. Next, we're gonna select the plus sign. And your plus sign could be in a different location depending on if you're using an iPhone or an iPad. I'm currently using my iPad, so let's click on the plus sign. Okay? Next, we wanna select add automation. This is where we are gonna configure HomeKit to look for our Plex sensors that we added in HomeBridge. Those sensors being play, pause, start, and stop. So basically HomeKit, Plex, and HomeBridge are all gonna to talk to each other. So for example, when a movie or TV show starts playing in Plex, HomeKit will show that a sensor is active and we can assign automations based on what sensor is currently active. So we're gonna hit add automation and then a sensor detects something. Then we wanna find our sensors that we added and hopefully you put them in a specific room. If not, I would highly recommend that you do that so that it's easy to find. Mine is in Man Cave. All right, so as you can see here in HomeKit, I have my two sensors. I have Plex Movie, Play Stop, Plex Movie, Resume, Pause. All right, so the first sensor that we wanna configure is the Play Pause sensor. And it should be pretty self-explanatory. We wanna add automations to our lights so that when we start a movie in Plex, we can dim or completely turn off our lights. And then when we pause the movie, we can have the lights come back on to 50%. And my riser lights can come on to 20%. And maybe I wanna turn on the hallway light to 100% so that I can go to the bathroom. And oh, I wanna turn the kitchen lights on so that I can get a beverage and make some popcorn. Whatever you wanna do, we can do that now. If it's inside of HomeKit, we can manipulate it. Now for this tutorial, I'm just gonna focus on lighting, but you can also configure this to work with thermostats, switches. If it shows up in HomeKit, you can automate it with Plex if your heart desires. Now, I already have my sensors configured, so I'm just gonna show you how I did that. And as I said, the first sensor we're gonna configure as our play pause. So if I click on the automation that I have named, Plex has started, we'll see a host of options to configure. All right, so I'm gonna back out of the screen, but normally you would select play or stop if that's what you're configuring, or you would hit resume pause. So as I said, mine are already configured, so I'm gonna back out and I'm gonna find my automation that I have called Plex has started. So I clicked on the automation that I named Plex has started and we're gonna see a host of options to configure. Now we can enable or disable this automation here. As you see, there's a toggle on or off button and we can name our automation, which I've already done. Plex has started. Now you can name this whatever you want, but mine is called Plex has started. So we're gonna hit done on that and 
we want to look at the section that says when. This is telling HomeKit when a sensor is detected, I want my lights to do X, Y, or Z. So if I click here, the first thing we see is our play stop sensors. Okay, next we wanna select detects occupancy. Occupancy is the state of our sensor. Either HomeKit has detected that a sensor is in the play state or the stop state. So I'm gonna select detects occupancy and it's already selected. So you would just select that occupancy. Next, we wanna select any. Now we're not gonna use the people section, but that's just telling HomeKit to only run this automation when I'm home or when I'm not home and whatever users you've added to your home. So I'm gonna make sure that this says any and you can select whichever one that you want, but I'm gonna select any. All right, so we've selected our occupancy. So we can hit back now, okay? Now we wanna select our accessories. So we'll hit select accessories and scenes. And here you can select scenes that are already created if you want. And if you don't know what a scene is, scenes are just a really convenient way to control the state of one device or even multiple devices all at once. Or you can select individual devices, which I'm gonna do. And in this case, I'm just selecting lights. So I'm gonna scroll down and select the lights that I want in my home theater room and my kitchen. And again, they're already selected. So once you select your devices, we can hit done. All right, so I'm just gonna show you here. I'm gonna scroll down to my accessories. And what you would do is you would select, select accessories and scenes. And then if you have some scenes, you can select those. But I won't only want to select the certain lights that I want. So I wanna select my front light which is selected, my riser lights, the two, le to two theater lights that are behind me, and that's it. So once you select those, oh, and my hallway light, almost forgot about that. So once you select those, you can hit done. So now we'll see all the accessories or devices that we selected under the accessories section. And here I can tell HomeKit the state that I want the lights to be in when the movie starts. Because remember, right now we're only configuring for when a movie starts in Plex. So I can select on or off. I can select the brightness. And actually I want these lights to be off when the movie starts so I'm going to make sure I turn those back off. But just to show you that you can select the brightness. And I can select the color. So Let's say I want to turn this back on, and right now it's on the off state, but it doesn't matter, I can still select the color. I can change the color to whatever color that is, orange, red, green, and then if I want, if I can edit, if I want to edit, I can drag this slider to whatever color I want, so I'm gonna drag that back to the white, because that's the color that I like, and hit X, and then I'm gonna turn that life back off because I want my lights to in my kitchen to turn off when the movie is on. I don't need them to be on when the movie's playing. Now, if you wanna make sure your automation is working, you can select test this automation. And once you confirm everything is working, then you can just hit done. Now, I already know that mine is working, so I'm not gonna do that here, but if you want, you can do that and make sure that everything is working before you actually set up this automation. All right, so to recap, what we've done is we've set up an automation to tell HomeKit that when it detects our play sensor or when it detects that a movie has started in Plex, I want my theater lights to turn completely off. I want my riser lights to go down to 1% brightness at the specified color, as you can see here, which I didn't show you, but it's already done. But I want my hallway light to turn off as well, and I want my kitchen lights to either turn off or I can set them to 30% brightness, it doesn't matter. Whatever you've specified, the color, you can do that. So this is my configuration, but you can configure your setup however you like. All right, now it's actually time to test our automation. So I'm gonna hit done here, okay? All right, so I have my Harmony remote here and I've turned on all the lights in my theater so you can see for yourself how this works. Now, if you'll look behind me, you'll see that I have Plex open and the image is gonna look pretty washed out because all the lights are on. So don't 
paying attention to that. But I want you to see that when I press play on my remote, if we configured our automations right for starting a movie, all my lights that I selected should respond accordingly. Now you probably won't be able to see my riser lights, but they are on and they will dim to 1%, but you should be able to see the lights completely dim, turn off, except for my studio lights. I still need those studio lights on so that you can see me on the camera, but I've turned on all my theater lights and I'm gonna start the movie with my remote here so you can see. I'm gonna start the movie and then you should see the lights dim down. So let's try it. And there you go. So all the lights dim down, well the lights turned off, my riser lights dim down to the specified configuration that I have. So if I hit pause, you'll see that I have my lights configured for when the movie is paused as well. So I'm gonna hit pause. And as you can see, my lights came back on the way that I specified them to. Now I didn't show you what that configuration is yet. We're gonna to get to that in a little bit, but I wanted you to see that play and pause works with Plex once you have your home kit set up however you want. All right, so I'm gonna turn those lights back off and then we're gonna continue the tutorial. All right, so our automation is working as it should. So now we just need to follow the same steps to set up our pause, resume, and stop automations. Now, technically, you can just set up start and stop automations and just add a pause automation since pause and stop are basically the same, but we want to mirror the APIs and Plex's infrastructure. So I made automations for start, stop, pause, and resume. And I would also encourage you to do the same thing. The reason why is because while some of the sensors might be the same like pause and stop, the difference is the state of the sensor. So before movie starts, obviously nothing is playing, so you might have on all or some of your lights prior to starting a movie. And when I hit pause, that movie is gonna stay paused until I resume it. So maybe I only want certain lights to come on with a certain brightness when I pause a movie. I might just need to go to the bathroom really quick or grab a snack. And in that instance, I only need minimal lights to see where I'm going. And I might need the hallway light to come on for the duration that the movie is paused. Whereas if a movie finishes or I just don't want to watch TV anymore, I'm done. So I'm probably going to want more lights on versus when a movie is just paused. Hopefully that makes sense. Good? Okay, good. But the steps for setting up automations for start, stop, pause, and resume are exactly the same. So I'm not going to make this video any longer by showing you the exact same step four times. But let's go ahead and set up our automation for when we pause our movie. So you're going to follow the same steps as before. And remember, my automation is already set, but you can rewind this video if you don't remember what those steps are. So I'm going to click on my automation name, Plex is paused. And then we're going to select when. And I'm going to select stops detecting occupancy. Now, hopefully this makes sense now. The movie is paused, so that means HomeKit has stopped detecting that the sensor is active. Or in other words, HomeKit has stopped detecting that the movie is playing, hence our selection, stops detecting occupancy. Occupancy is the state of the sensor. So we're gonna hit back, and then under accessories, I'm gonna select my lights, and I've already done that here. All right, so I showed you how to select your lights and it's pretty self-explanatory. If you use HomeKit, you know how to select your lights. So I have my island lights, which is in the kitchen to come on at 50% because I may wanna go get some popcorn or get something to drink. And then I have my riser lights to come on at 50%. And then the two theater lights behind me are gonna come on at 100%. And then I want my highlight light to come on. Now, since my movie is paused, I can select the brightness of each lights like we did before. I don't want all the lights in my theater to come on, and the ones that I do select, I don't want them on at full brightness. I just need enough light to move around so I can see because I'm going to resume the movie. So once I've customized all my lights, you can test the automation if you like, but make sure that it works and then you can hit done. 
And that is it. That is how you integrate Plex with HomeKit via HomeBridge. All right, now side note. There is an easier alternative to using an always on computer for HomeBridge and it's called Hoobs. Hoobs Box is a plug and play hub that makes smart accessories compatible with your favorite ecosystem. So whether you're using Apple HomeKit, Google Home or Amazon Alexa, you're unlikely to find compatible accessories and services that all work together nicely under one roof. With Hoobs, most of the install and configuration is already done. It's basically HomeBridge on a Raspberry Pi. It's a HomeBridge plug and play solution ready to use out of the box. Now, if you guys would like to help me get one on the channel for review, then let me know down in the comments and I'll reach out to the company for a collaboration. I also wanna throw a quick disclaimer at you as well. So HomeBridge is not officially sanctioned by Apple. So really the only downside to HomeBridge is that it's possible at any time Apple could block HomeBridge from working with HomeKit. Possible, but unlikely, as HomeBridge has been around for years, but Apple has never done anything. All right, guys, well, that is gonna conclude it for this three-part series, how to integrate Plex with HomeKit. And I really hope this tutorial is gonna help you guys. I've been wanting to make this tutorial for a while, months actually, and it was really hard trying to find the best way to make a video like this. It was a lot of fun brainstorming, but it was also a lot of work. A lot of time and effort went into making this tutorial for you guys. So if you found this tutorial helpful, please hit the like button. Tell your home theater buddies and make sure if you're not already subscribed, you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification so you know when I upload new content. That will really help the channel to continue to grow. And it will also help me to get home theater gear on the channel to review for you guys. So thank you to everyone who has supported the channel from day one. I couldn't have made this channel without you guys, without the support. So I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video. I'm Hater at Cowboy, and this is Hater at Cowboy Cinema.